So welcome back to uh, this week. Oh, uh, thanks, Tony. In, in the new school of recruitment, Brooklyn's obviously doing business. Yes. Um, another week, another business. Um, <laughs> But uh, we've got some exciting guests today. Um, I know, I'm so excited. Yeah, this is actually this is something that I've been looking forward to because mm -hmm. we did a we did a like a internally as a team looked at businesses that we aspired and, and were inspired by, and this business was one that I I listed um, because I, it's just the the stuff that they've been able to do in such a small amount of time, the amount of disruption, the amount. Yeah. Of, um, just as a business, their the EVP, yes. everything is, is, is really exciting. And, and I think, to be honest, even from a war and talent point, we, we, we compete with them at times. Mm. Um, from, I think, at times. Yeah, at times. a lot of the startups I work with do. And I completely, I completely concur in terms of fangirling the brand. Yeah, yeah. So the brand we're talking about is, uh, is Zero. And Zero! Yeah, amazing <laughs> brand. We, um, we actually, fun enough, we actually um, uh, just built out an integration with them. Mm. But, uh, more on that later. Yes. But um, we've got Joe and James. So uh, Joe looks after the global sourcing, and uh, James looks after more local sourcing mm -hmm. and, and, and talent and attraction. So. And I think we should say that Joe's last name is James. Yes. So. Which and, I and love. They, they, yeah, yeah. They are phenomenal <laughs> duo, um, the dynamic duo. And and yeah, the first time I saw that through, I was like, so are we seeing. Joe James or Joe and James. Um, and the first time I met James, he said to me, this is Joe, she's my work wife. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. it. And that talks to the dynamic, which is why Amazing they are culture. such a strong talent team too. Yep, yeah, yeah. amazingly strong. They get a lot of great team. stuff done together. So today we'll talk about the war on talent. Yes. We'll talk a little bit about uh, how technology has helped them or, or I guess more just about how they've been able to scale their mm. talent. Um, they've gone through incredible scale and incredible growth. Yes. Um, and, and we'll just overall just talk about stuff. I know, stuff. And one thing that their brand is really well known for is how values-based they are right. and bringing that human touch back into even recruiting for a space like tech. So right. I'm super excited to do this. Can't well, wait to it. meet them. And I need to get Brooklyn back inside. So yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Welcome to the new school of recruitment. I'm Brooklyn. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Today we have Joe and James um, from, from Zero uh, joining us on the new school of recruitment. Mm -hmm. And this is a really, I think, going to be a really exciting um, episode because yep. we're going to talk about basically like what I know the word future of work kind of gets thrown around so much, but mm -hmm. it's that the war on talent. Yeah. how technology plays into that mm. and being from you know one of the the most you know amazing businesses in my eyes one of the most amazing businesses um, and and scaling so fast mm. how you guys have been able to attract such amazing talent at such fast speeds um, and globally as well so mm. I think from my end I'm, I'm, I'm gonna learn a lot today because uh, we we aspire to actually um, one day be the size of we put uh, be the size of zero and, and hopefully bigger. Um, but I'm sure, yeah, we, we have a lot of questions for you. But sure. I think for anyone that's watching, it'd be great to get your um, introductions uh, and, and what you do at Zero. Um, you can call me whatever you like, jack of all trades, but... Um, Magician. Yeah. <laughs> so into the saucer thing. Uh, sorcerer. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At yeah, least you're not yeah. called, like, was it a unicorn... Um, Oh, oh, unicorn chaser. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. I'm too old for that. No, no, no. Um, basically, my focus is around the proactive piece sure. of sourcing talent um, and, uh, you know, how that sort of uh, feeds into our activities around succession planning, um, pipelining for the future, and also a lot of our executive hires. So I guess filling that need um, in terms of you know, because we're a we're a we're a growing company, and we've got lofty aspirations, um, which we've achieved some of them. Um, but but we think big, and we also like to hire big sure, to sure. help us on our journey. So that's a big part of my role. And is that in Australia only, or are you sourcing for all the global offices? Globally. Wow. Yeah. yeah. How's it you, and you, and you, <laughs> Unfortunately, this is where technology comes into play. I don't need to fly. I can do it from my desk. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, but it's also very interesting because we're a global company but our brand mm. is very different right. in each market, right. um, the That's level of maturation. So it also then um, means that you've got to approach it quite differently okay. in each market. Interesting. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, keen to, keen to uh, hear more about that because even we, we, we did some sourcing interstate and mm. it's, uh, 
it's very different because you're, you're like you're using you know you also on Skype or Google Hangouts and things like that, and and it's a very different market, especially when you don't know that market, right? So, mm. um, and yourself? Excellent. Uh, thanks, Tony. So my role, unlike Joe, is it's more regionally focused. So um, my title is a talent acquisition manager. Um, I work sort of in Australia and more recently a little bit of Asia as well. We're starting to expand into to new markets there, which is sure. really exciting. Um, so I guess managing the day-to-day -day, um, recruitment activity that happens within that uh, region, working closely yep. with our sourcing function, um, you know, looking at our employer branding yep. um, initiatives and, and how we're getting our, our story out to market effectively yep. um, would be in a nutshell what, what I'm responsible for. Yeah, cool. Amazing. Right. We talked about this in the in the warm-up chat and we were sort of touching on the fact that, you know, talent in tech is such a competitive space. Mm. It doesn't matter where you are globally. It is just really hard. If you speak to any of your, you know, very similar people all over the world, our talent leaders are really struggling to not just find great talent and attract them in, but retain them as well. Well, I think we all kind of mm. somewhat compete space. against each yeah. other for talent, right? You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, tech stack aside, yeah. essentially, you know, a lot of what we, we look for in technology in particular is that people aspect and that heart and that soul and that connection to values. Mm. What's Zero doing to, I guess, keep that, you know, amazing culture that you have whilst, you know, bringing in so many people and scaling at such a phenomenal rate? Yeah, absolutely. Look, we, we hire, you know, in Australia, over 100 people every year to join the business. So it's um, it's a challenge and, and as you say, the you know, the, the war for talent is, is real. There is a real demand on, you know, high caliber talent. It is really real. Technology, is really right? real. Yeah. So, so for us, it's, I guess it's about educating hiring managers right from the start of a hiring process around, um, you know, what, what they need from a tech stack perspective or from technical skills, but also what about the non-tech side of things? What, what are the softer skills? Mm. What are the behavioral attributes that they'll uh, require? Um, in, in bringing somebody new into their team and really making sure that they're unpacking that and that they're understanding that what their team looks like um, and what some of those softer skills are yeah. um, in order to help take their team forward and, and not focus too much on building a big shopping list um, yeah. in mm. terms of technical requirements. Because that shopping we don't, list. We don't want to be looking for a unicorn, right? No, um, and, on... and, and attitude trumps everything. Mm. So people can be taught um, in terms of the technical side, but I think when you're hiring um, to our values and to our culture and also ensuring diversity that you're not hiring more of yourself so that you end mm. up with this mm. homogenous mm. team. Right. Because um, that can be a default. Correct. Um, hey, you're great. We're having yeah. so much yeah. fun. We yeah. think alike. We, we you know, we yeah. have a ball. Um, so, so I think that's really critical um, when you are scaling and mm -hmm. when you're also really holding on to the culture that actually separates you from your competitors. Yeah. Because ultimately you're trying to create a value proposition mm -hmm for talent in the market that speaks to their values, um, that provides a, a purpose. Sure. Um, and these are the things that we look for, not the, not the laundry list yeah. of job responsibilities, yeah. but how can I picture myself in your workplace and, and, and will I learn, will sure. I thrive, and will I have a great time? Sure. Mm. Now, Zero has gone through some incredible growth. I think like that's mm. probably an understatement, right? Mm. That scaling is something that is, um, doesn't happen often, but when, when it does, there's challenges that, are, that come up and, and hiring challenges and all that sort of stuff. Mm. What have been some of the major challenges that both yourself have faced around you know, hiring and meeting that scaling demand? Mm. I think the first thing I'd point to is, is not having alignment at the start of a process. Okay. So we always make sure we sit down with a hiring manager and it sounds simple, but, but always sit down and have that, that job brief. And there it's to talk about Yes, we need this particular skill set sure. for the vacancy. It's also to agree on the process and make sure. sure that the hiring manager, the sourcer, the talent person, the interviewers are all sure. on the same page in terms of what we're looking sure. for. So otherwise it creates delays in the process. Sure. If, if the hiring manager two up, four weeks into a process, oh, I don't think that person has enough of A, B, or C. Yeah. It's a real frustration. Um, so that's something we, we, we certainly see from, yeah. from early. And what about, can you combat that or have you been able to combat some of that through technology? 
Um, look, I think um, I think utilising things like our ATS so that we um, can collaborate with the hiring manager that they've got um, oversight of uh, the candidates coming through, and we can work collectively on that platform um, to bring to bring talent and through. And that's globally. You'll, yeah. you'll be sort of funneling everything through the same ATS globally. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Great, yeah. Yeah. That's not to say that we don't also work on <laughs> spreadsheets. Um, I think I think everybody does that. And look, we are still we're still we're still learning. We're still sure. feeling our way. Um, we make mistakes. Um, you know, sometimes we're moving so fast that we skirt around the side and kind of forget the process and go, "Sorry, James, there's no CV and it's not in the ATS." Mm -hmm. But can I have a contract because we're hiring someone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that yeah, does yeah, happen. Yeah. It happens all the time. Mm. That, that, yeah. I am, I am guilty of that. <laughs> I, I, I tend, to, I know, I know. I'm not very, I'm not very, I'm not very good with, um, with process. But, I, but I think the key is mm. collaboration, mm. communication, sure. and also the acknowledgement that um, the goalposts are always shifting. Yeah. There's always ambiguity. Roles can be on, off, mm. on, off, and, and we just work. We work with that. Sure. Um, yeah. And, and, a, and I think a. a a point that you made earlier about about scaling um, you know we haven't broken even yet we sure. have limited resources so mm. we can't um, bring in a whole lot of technology sure. that's gonna you know revolutionize our lives and we can't hire a lot of people so fortunately um, I think with a, a company like zero where we're all you know working towards the same thing Everybody's a talent ambassador. Sure. So when you every, have everybody thinking like that and really wanting and willing this to happen, that makes our life easier, I think. Absolutely. Um, it, it really is a partnership. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of what I do is work with small startups who are wanting to scale and grow their teams. And often one of the hardest aspects at that stage is that they don't have an employer brand. They mm. don't have a recognised brand like some of us in this room have today and there's a lot of that hard selling and trying to actually get these amazing people on board quick smart and then a zero would come along to say we've also got a very similar mm. role we've got an amazing brand and we look after our people my question in reverse back to you James is really do you find that having such a strong consumer and employment brand makes it easier you've obviously seen that life cycle from you know Yep. sort of a growth stage or does it now make it a lot harder because you're now representing something so much bigger yeah it, it it's a really good question and, and something that um the short answer is that it helps absolutely um what do you mean you don't know zero <laughs> <laughs> joe and i yeah talk, but it can be a hindrance yeah. it can be a hindrance. <laughs> absolutely so, so joe and i talk a lot about sort of the, the three pillars in in recruitment of our employer brand so so what is our evp and, and how are we putting mm. that to market Okay, so we're really clear on on what that actually looks like and, and how we translate that message to market. Um, second pillar being our sourcing capability and our third pillar around the actual day-to-day -day management of a particular vacancy. So those three are very closely intertwined, but, but back to your question on, on employer branding, absolutely. I mean, we're in a, we're in a really lucky position that, that um, the business has got some you know, ha ha had some really good runs on the board. Mm. Okay, so we've, we've sort of evolved from that startup yeah. phase, but we're not the big corporate either. Yeah. And we, we sit really nicely in between and, and can shift both sides when we need to. Um, and that really appeals to people. A um, whole heap of other things around flexible work, around the ability to come in and make an impact on a function that's often new or still evolving. Um, so there are, yeah, we certainly lean on our, our strong employer brand a lot. Um, but for startups who are who are thinking of hiring or or going to market for us, it's really important that they actually stop and think about that first before they do so. What is their mm. EVP? How do they differentiate themselves and their opportunity mm. compared to others in the market, so they can be really clear and succinct with that mm. messaging. And and it, and and I think for a startup as well, when I when I reflect on on a lot of what we do, I mean our brand platform, and it's not just um, the the EVP, but it's also um, our positioning for our customers and our and our um, and and the small business community. But it's it's a brand platform that really is from the inside out, mm. um, and it and it reflects our people. Um, and so when I think about a lot of what we do around our EVP and, and what we do around attracting um, talent, it, it really mirrors what we do for our clients as well. Yeah. And it really comes down to storytelling. Yeah. 
and providing a window into us and what we do. Mm. And I think that that's something that any startup yeah. can do. Um, you know, whether it's simple videos on LinkedIn yes. attached to, you know, the, the jobs that they're advertising, et cetera. Mm. Technology allows you to do that, but it can be pretty pretty low tech, yeah. Yeah. Um, low cost, um, but it really actually comes down to just telling stories mm. and actually giving people an opportunity to, to not just read on paper, mm. but hear someone talking about what the company's doing, what's yep. exciting about it. And the behind you know, what the, the scenes. What the business, absolutely, mm. absolutely. See our offices, hear mm. our story. Um, hear from our clients and our customers sure. and, and be a part of what we're trying to achieve. Anyone can tell that story. Yeah. I actually think WePo do that so well. Yeah. Same. You yep. really, really Same. built that employer brand it's and good to mix know. that in very nicely to the consumer brand as well. That's good to know. I yeah. think I just sometimes... And it gives a really clear sense of who you are. Yeah. It's good to know because honestly, a lot, half the time it's just rambling and it's just like... <laughs> I, I need to I need it output it somewhere. So LinkedIn will be my uh, platform to. Uh, you um, think do we it. don't waffle? <laughs> <laughs> so I think when we talk about war on talent, or, or even just hiring, right? A lot yep. of people automatically think about permanent hires. Mm. Um, and then there's this other element, right? Which mm. is your contingent or your contract or your casual staff. Mm. Now there's there's this stuff like um, you look at some of the stats where fifty percent, fifty seven percent of um, freelancers at the moment. Freelance, not because they have to, but because they choose to. That's what they want to do. Mm. And then another one, there was a, a research done by Deloitte where by 2020, they expect that 40% uh, of the, the global workforce is going to be contingent or casual. Mm. How does that affect your hiring? As a business for now, because we are in the, uh, you know, still in the accelerator phase. And, and as yeah. I said, it's, it's a huge number of hires that we're making every year. We, mm. we are very much skewed towards permanent full-time sure. contracts. Sure. Um, but that'll change, yeah, right? As, sure. as you say, um, <laughs> the, the environment that we operate in now, I look back at my mum and dad's workforce and their mum and dad's workforce. And yeah. my wife and I work in you know, very different different circumstances to what they do and that's only going to continue to change right so um, again we, we talk about it a lot that what will our hiring practices and what will our workforce look like right. in three years in five years and seven years and yeah. the, the growth of that contingent workforce um, and our ability to secure talent and, and bring in great people who have flexible working requirements who are keen on contract owned yeah. positions we, we need to be thinking about that sure. and working out you know, which, which technologies can help us facilitate yeah. that. I think as a business, we're still working that through, as, yep. as, as Jim yeah. said. Um, you know, the reality is that um, uh, freelancers often come with, at a higher cost. Sure. Um, and, you know, we haven't broken even yet, so yeah, yeah. we have to contain costs. So it's, it, it's often not an option. However, mm. I think, um, you know, acknowledging that people work differently um, these days or need to right. or want to, um, and that really it's about the output and the value that people bring, right. not how they do it and where they do it. So, you know, we've been really lucky enough to have the support of the of the business to be able to explore um, options like part-time developers, which um, I think, Jim, you did some, mm. you know, quick handy research and yep. found, couldn't find any mm. part-time developer roles. And so that was something that we were able to do. At the moment, we're exploring um, whether we can go out to market and, and advertise roles that are within school hours. Right. Or for... That's good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that's not for women. Yeah. For men and women, right. but for people who need to work in school hours or for people who would like to work in school hours and to school terms. Right. Um, you know, yeah. so there are very different ways that you can look yeah. at flexible working Is and part-time working. We're, we're, we're exploring, have we actually... So the, the part-time developer, yes, there's a return, return to work a, um, yep. campaign that we're running. The, the school time hours, no, but hopefully it won't be far away. Yeah. Yeah. But that's good because like a lot of businesses kind of go, ah, oh, that's not going to happen. Too or we don't, hard yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Either it's too hard or they just, nah, it's going to stay permanent, that's it. Like, it's never, like, contingent doesn't exist, et cetera, et cetera, right? But it is one of those things where you have to be aware of it and accept it and yep. go, it is, it is coming. Yeah. How does your business adapt to it or evolve yeah. to it? Which is really cool to hear those kind of things. Yeah. Even your, and especially how you said, like, it's not just about the women, you know, like Nick, yes. our co-founder, he, he picks up and drops off his kid around the corner every day, you know? Um, 
Now, it, he's lucky that the office is here and it's only walking distance. Mm. But if it wasn't, he'd, he'd have to leave the office mm. really early or, mm. you know, it just throws mm. the schedule around. Mm. So My husband starts early and finishes early, so I do drop off in the morning right. and he's there in the afternoon. Okay. Um, so it's not just me, it's, yeah. it's, it's him as well. Yeah. Yeah. Ironically, I think he's actually found it harder to, to broach the... The, the, the flexible work. It is hard. It is hard. Yeah, yeah, but I think workplaces are getting there. Yeah. yeah. And um, my husband's the primary carer. Yeah. So there you go. it's just, it's shifting yeah. Yeah. every single day. And I heard this wonderful saying today, and it was um, change doesn't happen by chance. No. You mm. know, if we're not doing something mm. step by step, it's not about the next 50 steps. It's about the next one mm. and what we can do as organisations mm. hiring for the future. Absolutely. And asking questions internally, like, can we do this? Can we break the cycle? What are we doing that can be different? Mm. I think that's incredible. One question I have for you is really around what you are doing. Obviously, with tech comes the whole gender diversity kind of platform. I hear Zero is doing some incredible things there. I'd love to find out what sort of initiatives are yep. on the cards for recruiting, especially in STEM, for example, um, as you scale the business as sure. well and how that feeds into it. Absolutely. Um, and it's something uh, that we have thought about a lot and, and, you know, I think come a long way in the three years that I've been with the business. Um, the first stat I'd point to is, is the fact that within product and technology, we've actually hired more females than males in the last 12 months. That's incredible. So 52%. That's pretty much unheard of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. been females. And, it's amazing. And, you know, something we're really proud of. So Talk we're, about employment brands. Uh, <laughs> so so we, we look at it in two ways. What, what can we do internally? Um, but what can we do externally, right? Yeah. Because we, we recognise that it's a broader mm. industry issue, for example, that there aren't enough girls coming mm. through yeah. studying, Absolutely. choosing those subjects at school. So through uh, initiatives like uh, Code the Future, through their Tech Girl movement, and um, Superhero Daughter Day, supporting initiatives like, like those things that, that are helping really create awareness around mm. careers in technology yeah. um, it, it is one uh, approach we're taking that, that will help, I guess, the industry as a whole. Sure. And secondly, internally, what, what are some some more tactical initiatives that we can um, execute to, to, to help make sure we've got a really diverse workforce? So, so Joe touched on a couple of those, a specific part-time yep. developer campaign, a, um, you know, re return to work program for those who have been out of work for, um, you know, two, two or three years mm -hmm. then plus and, and giving them a little bit more of a have a leg up to, yeah. to get into the business and then providing yeah. additional support once they're, once they're in the business. Some of the um, internships that we run for yeah. people who have gone through a uh, general assembly or a Code Like a Girl program where they might not have done a software engineering yeah. or a computer science yeah. degree, but yeah, they're passionate the about changes, tech. Right? They're the yeah. career changes yeah. and they've come into the business and done really well. So it's, it's again, to Joe's point earlier, not square peg, square hole, it, 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 it's keeping your um, you know, periphery open and, and thinking about how do we build diverse teams, because yeah. we know diverse teams are better at solving problems, better at uh, you know, aligning to, to, what, uh, to, to solving problems with our customers and, and thinking what does that look like from a recruitment perspective and yeah, and, um, yeah executing yeah. Some, some initiatives yeah. like that. So I, I, I think I think we've got programs mm. right along the the journey there, right from from uh, you know thinking about um, uh, graduate intakes mm. and 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 the kids coming through to what we can do sure. along so, that career path. So I read this uh, this quote. And I'm, I've been trying to remember who it is, and I don't I don't want to say the name because like uh, it might Ruby be completely. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, that's it. I was going to say, you'll get inundated. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, it's, I've forgotten the name. I've, I've got it on my desk somewhere. But it was, um, it was a really, it's, it's been a quote that's really stuck with me, mm. which is, um, it's no longer the big fish that eats the small fish. It's the fast fish that eats the slow fish, mm. right? Now, a business like Zero, you, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, it's a good one. Cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 I wish it was mine, but it's not mine. <laughs> yeah. um, but a company like Zero is, done that right yeah. where you've started off as as you know a smaller fish but a very fast fish 
and you're able to eat the slower and the bigger fishes out there and completely disrupting the market mm. out there. Uh, the stuff that you know Zero is working on, um, even you know, we've got an integration working mm. with you guys, which is really amazing. But mm. today's not about that. Today's about you know, obviously how this is um, coming about. But from a disruption point, where do you see you know what you've what you've what you've done in the accounting world? Where do you see that disruption within the HR and the recruiting world? Oh, wow, that's a good question. I mean, I, really, I, really I don't know. Really, I don't really know if I'm way, answering but. the question, <laughs> but uh, we were just talking about this earlier. When you you start thinking about tech in the HR recruitment yeah. space, and I mean, there's a lot to come that you know AI and and everything else is going to afford, and and I think what that's going to do is really allow for um, those sort of uh, administrative you know, detail, process, all of that stuff will be taken care of. Yeah. And, I, and I think for us, what I see is a focus on the human mm. more and more and the, and, and the people. So I think um, in terms of, I don't know if it's disruption, but I, I think for those that are, that are going to get it right or will be winning that race will be the ones that get that. Yeah. And we'll actually be able to speak to the hearts and minds um, and, you know, to, to go back to what we were talking about, you know, clear values, clear sense of purpose and authenticity. Yeah. I, I think there's, I think, uh, there's um, some fatigue there um, about all of the fake news and the everything else yeah. and, and people are sort of going back to the basics and they yeah. want that authentic yeah. connection. Yeah. Um, and that people connection. So I think that's what organizations can do really well. Yeah, I mean, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, what I'm hearing is because you often get these people saying, this is gonna disrupt or take away my job. Or, you know, an AI or even we, we get messages from recruiters saying you're gonna take away our job um, through, you know, what you're creating. But often it's, it's not about taking away or replacing the job. It's actually right. enabling, it's right? It's taking the crap stuff away right. and letting you right. focus on the really good stuff, right. it's, which is engaging and connecting with people and... and, and <gasps> Brooke Rogers. <Sorry, Brooke> <laughs> There it is. No. That's what's going to happen. He's like, I said that quote. This, now this is disruption. <laughs> this is disruption at its core, isn't it? Um, uh, no, it gets you. To, like, I mean, I don't do the boring stuff anyway. Yeah, I sure. just overlook it right. and go, sorry about that. I didn't do it. <laughs> yeah. um, but High five. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting for the tech to catch up yeah, to me sure, so we sure. can do it for me. Yes. Um, but it's where we get to do the good stuff. It's the enabler, right? If yeah. you use it right, Absolutely. it doesn't take away, Absolutely. it enables you to do more. Absolutely. <laughs> that's good so to that's where we can get to the heart of it, which is about people connecting with people, making authentic connections, yep. um, and allowing all of us mm. to do the best work of our lives yeah um and uh, when you said earlier you know Sorry, what is work point. i mean what is work and what is it's such it's so it's so it's intertwined so now yeah. and That's technology right. has really done that so for me it's really important that when i'm at work i'm a mum of two and i'm a global talent sourcer and when i go home i'm yep. a mum and my kids know i work at zero Amazing. and they think it's awesome that's awesome. cool yeah. awesome. that's cool yeah. well thank you so much for joining us in this episode of the New School of Recruitment. And I loved hearing about just bringing so much heart and human back into tech recruiting. And it's, I'm so excited for Zero, and we'll be watching on, won't we? And yeah. it's so exciting to see what comes out of the growth as well. And we've got Brooklyn here as well. <laughs> I have one, one really quick question, actually, to wrap this up. I think it's a good way to wrap it up. Um, Zero obviously helps. I think it's last time I went into your office, there was there was a counter which said you had a million. Is that a million small yeah. businesses? Yeah, yeah, Something yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Some small That's number. That's like right? Tony. Um, it's now at two million, I think. Or, <laughs> but um, you know, Zero helps all these amazing small businesses out there. You know, with their daily accounting needs, right? From a, a lot of these businesses are growing and require that that almost that help within the hiring stage as well, right? Mm. So what advice could you give them if they're watching around what, so he's, he's going hard on your what? finger, isn't he, Brooklyn? That's all right. Um, what advice could you give, you know, the small business owners, if they're out there watching this, advice around their hiring, you know, and, and how they can do better in the future? Um, it, it's interesting you bring that up because we had uh, a panel this morning for International Women's Day sure. um, and a couple of the entrepreneurs that were on the panel mentioned staffing as one of 
the, the toughest areas for them and right. it's critical to get it right yeah um, you know first of all it's your baby mm. um, and so you need to have that trust with that other person and also there's only a couple of you so <laughs> you need to get it right. right right so I think it's really just to ensure that um, that you don't rush these things um, <laughs> that you you keep a focus on your values and the culture that you that you want to create um, and, it, and it really should be no different than, than what we do at zero. Mm. Um, focus on the, on the basics, on, the, on, on what's important. Um, don't forget your values um, because, uh, you know, it can be too often you, you'll jump at the first thing when someone's got the tech skills, the technical skills that you require. Mm. Mm. And, and I think for, for us, as I mentioned earlier, we're always thinking about our employer brand. We're always thinking about hiring. So the, the, there's particular hiring managers in the business who are meeting people for coffees who are of interest, who are keeping their uh, network open externally at meetups. and That's and, great. Uh, it, it, it makes it, our job so much absolutely, easier. Absolutely, right? Absolutely. So when it, when it comes, when it comes so time to hire, there's, there's people there who Hence they know. Hence the no CVs and just a, oh, we're just going to go straight in and hire them. <laughs> absolutely. So I think, think yeah. for, for small businesses, that, that the same... i dating. Absolutely. The, the, the same principles apply, right? So be, be always thinking about your employer brand and how you're getting that message out to market. Be always thinking about who are the good people out there who could be potential future... Uh, future leaders for your business. That, that'd be two simple tips that apply to us, but they certainly apply to small yeah. business as well. Well, thank you so much for your time and thank you, Ruby, for always co hosting and asking some amazing so questions. Fun. Thank you, Thanks, Brooklyn. Brooklyn yeah. for thank uh, coming you. Yeah. Yeah. and doing that. Good on you, Brooklyn. Um, I think it's timely to mention Thanks as well. We've, uh, we're really excited to announce that obviously we've got the integration set up with Zero. So if you are using WePoy and are a Zero user, you can actually integrate and automatically ledger, reconcile in real time. But um, there'll be more details about that. But thanks again. No and, problem. Uh, appreciate no, your time. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Ruby. Thanks, Tony. Thank you.